And uh, you used to think that once, that especially, uh, you know, the men have been out there, been doing it for a long time. But you used to think that once the women get a certain age and they become grandmas and all that, that they would kind of settle down. But it's more dating available at 60 than it was it is at 16. <laughs> you may have to take all the kids with you. But they available. They available. So, <laughs> but the Bible said that they need to be washing the saints' feet. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible say. Well, let me leave that alone. Okay. Yeah, do. Yeah, do. It say quit waxing one time. Let me leave that alone. Hatred. Hatred is intense dislike or ill will. It's in the body of Christ. It's everywhere. Is when you have such a dislike or ill will for somebody, supposed to be your brother or sister, that's hatred, man. Yeah. If God had give you a assignment in the kingdom, in the house of the Lord, in, in the kingdom, man, in your own house, and you hate some, someone and you have such an ill will for them, that, man, I'm just telling you, the enemy, a lot of folk dealing with hate and don't know they're dealing with it. Because yeah. the Holy Ghost will tell you. You're supposed to pray, forgive my debtors, Forgive those. Forgive my debts and forgive my debtors. Forgive my trespasses. Lord, forgive me if I have any hate in my heart. Yeah. And this folk got hate in their heart. Can't sit on the same pew. Uh, Y'all quiet, but you know, you need to check your heart if you got any hate. If your brother trespassed against you, you forgive him once in your lifetime, the Bible say. No, yeah, nothing. It says seven times seventy. And if he turn and come back to you again, you forgive him. If your brother trespass, if your brother trespass, if your sister trespass, you cannot walk around in unforgiveness and think that the Holy Ghost is going to empower you. I'm going to say it again. You cannot walk around and be the anointed person you can be if you let offense stop you from flowing in love. The Holy Ghost works in love. Y'all better hear me. Now, sitting behind this desk, you got a lot of reasons to become offended. Working with people in any point of leadership, you got a lot of reason to become offended. Serving in the kingdom, you got a lot of reason to become offended. Ushering, preaching, teaching, serving, being a subordinate or being whatever. You got a whole lot. You can't, you, if you want your anointing, you got to value your anointing. The anointing is Christ on you. And you can't quit, give up, because you got you offended. The anointing don't flow like it wants to or could. You stun your growth. It doesn't matter what people do to you, what they say to you. You got to be in it to win it. Amen. You got to recognize Satan, that he got in Judas and he got in Peter. Yeah. He'll get in another believer. But Jesus forgave them. Yeah. Oh, you know, Peter, he, he, we know his, I mean, uh, Judas, we know his story. But you can't, you can't quit ushering because somebody rolled their eyes at you. You can't quit preaching because somebody didn't hear your sermon. Or somebody don't esteem you as the great I am. You can't quit being the first lady or the first deaconess or whatever because folk don't honor you. If somebody in the church don't like you, you can't just jack up and pack up. I'm just telling you. You can't quit your family because you and your wife don't get along. The first, Come on, you can't just... Up and buck, Chuck. Can't have it your way. It ain't your house. It's our house. It's God's house. And the enemy brings hatred in. Ill will. That's how witchcraft works. You hope people get sick. You hope they die. God, the Holy Ghost, know your heart. 
And you can't be wishing somebody leave either. I had a whole lot of people in this church didn't, didn't like me, agree with me. But the one thing God wouldn't let me do is want them to leave. Sometime when they left, I was glad they're gone, but he didn't let me. <laughs> but he checked me even behind that. I'm just being honest. You can't sit up there and want, I want them to leave, Lord, I want them to leave. It's his church. Grow in love, Stephen, Sally, Bill, Tommy. Iron sharpened as iron. <clears throat> it shows you where you weak. You're going to love up to a point. Hello? We may have to pray one another out the tribulation. Come on. Paul was preaching and somebody left him. And then when he came, came to a place... Uh, uh, that he wanted to come. I believe it was Barnabas. He said, I don't want him because he abandoned me. Amen. This is how we get to know if we really would God. Go through the hard times together. Yeah. We all attempted with sin. You don't get to take your candy and go hide in a, in a hotel for nine months. We all tempted to, to go do something. But the same Holy Ghost is talking to me is talking to you if you're a Christian. You ought to say amen. I ain't the only one got him. He go home with you. He tell me stop. Folk act like the preacher, the only one got the Holy Ghost. Tell you to shut up. Tell me to shut up. Tell me to come and go. I ain't got a heaven or a hell to put you in. Tell me to quit that. Tell me to stop. So if you're telling me, telling you. You just got to learn how to listen to it. Amen. Told me to hang up the phone. Yes. Told me to put down the text. Yes. Come on. Yes. Told me to get certain people out of my life. Yes. If he told me, he'd tell you. Yes. Well, can get mad at the preacher because he, he bearing his soul. I'm going to go to another church. Take your butt on. Yeah. All you who can't hear the word of the Lord. For thus said the Lord, be ye holy as I'm holy. Yeah. That means committed. Yeah. I wouldn't want a preacher that wasn't committed. Yeah. We ain't trying to get halfway to heaven. We're trying to get all the way. And the preacher ain't the only one got to stand before God one day and give an account for his sin. Amen. But the preacher know this, he got to give an account for his sin. And he can't just be soft peddling because y'all ain't coming back. Yeah. That's the truth. We shall all give an account of the deeds done in this body and how we treated the Holy Ghost. And this generation has decided that the Holy Ghost doesn't have any say. That's why we don't have much power. Now, don't you got joy? No, you don't. Envying, grudging over possessions, murders, to slay, kill. This is the work of the flesh. Drunkenness, to drown, revelings, to while in success, and such like. We've read it, but he said, and such like. In other words, when you want to please God, you, you want to come down to, and what's the such like? Not the skin of my teeth, well, I'm going to do some, I, but I don't do this, but I, yeah, yeah. He said, and such like. 
You know, we got to realize that he heaven and hell are two real places. They're two real places, man. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. He's talking about agape love. The Holy Ghost comes to teach you about love, joy, inner contentment. I'm content. I ain't got the best car. I don't live in the best house, but I'm content. Hallelujah. My house now is paid for. It ain't the prettiest house in the land of Oklahoma, but it's paid for. It's paid for. You ain't got to rejoice with me. It's paid for. Am I going to buy a new one? I don't know, but I'm content. My cars, they're paid for. Are they new? No. Got to take one to the shop every now and then. But I'm content. I drove the old gray truck, the old gray the mule. But I'm content. I've been through all of that trying to impress folk by driving the shiniest. I got some shiny stuff. But I'm content. Joy is being content. Being content with what you got. Yeah. You can want other stuff, but are you content with what you got? Yeah. Are you miserable? Peace is shalom, completeness. <coughs> That's the work of the Holy Ghost. Are you, do you have peace? Can you be by yourself and have peace? You know, are you agitated? Are you fidgety? You got, you got to always be around people. You always got to do something. I mean, peace. The Holy Ghost gives peace. If you got the Holy Spirit, you can walk in peace. I'm, I'm a living witness of it. Long-suffering, patience in spite of troubles. This is the fruit of the Spirit. You have troubles. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have doctor days. You're going to have financial seasons, man. You got to be long-suffering. You can't go out and jack folk up. You can't, praise the Lord, be impatient with everybody. You can't be snapping at your kids, snapping at your husband, snapping at everybody. What's wrong with you? I, 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 I ain't got to, I'm tired, sick of life. Ah, you can't be, nobody going to carry you. So what? So what? You got to be long-suffering with your kids. You can't bark at them. They come in, they want conversation, they want cuddling, they want you to nurture them. You can't do that. You can't be barking at your husband because you ain't got a new fur coat. You can't bark at your wife because you can't buy 24. You got 20s. You don't have to pay your bills now. You want to get in more debt, more trouble, but you got to be long-suffering. Some people have terminal illness. It ain't their fault. You got to be long-suffering. Some stuff people ain't going to do it your way. You got to be long-suffering in, in spite of trouble. You just can't up and leave because the marriage ain't working out. You just can't, you ain't getting the kind of sex you want. You want some freaky stuff from Channel X. Why don't you straighten up and be long-suffering? You, you've been watching the wrong channels. That's your problem. She won't flip over like that woman. She can't. <laughs> Y'all need to quit. I'm trying to be serious. There's people out there. And then they go leave they dime for five. It's a <laughs> gentleness. Let's move on. Gentleness. That's care for others in how you act and speak. You just can't be telling everybody off because you just speak your mind. Ain't too many people intimidated by you, you narcissistic nut. I just say what's on my mind. You ain't got that much mind to say that much. You ain't got no love is what you ain't got. Goodness is the fruit of the Spirit. That's holy, pure, righteous. Goodness. It's not weak to be good, to be pure, to be righteous. And faith, that's complete trust and confidence. Amen. That is the fruit of the Spirit. Meekness. This is, this is a good one here. We, we, we take this for granted. It's an attitude, a quality of heart, 
whereby a person is willing to accept and submit without resistance to the will and desire of someone else. That's a big one. We take for granted a meek person. Oh, they say, well, you can walk over there. You can do what you want to do. You can talk to bad to them. You can step all over them. You can walk all over them. Some of y'all are meek and you feel bad about it. You cry. You've been, you've been played on because you're meek. It's an attitude, a quality of heart. A person is willing to accept and submit without resistance to the will and desire of someone else. In the case of Christians, this is God. <coughs> Excuse me. Yielding, docile, or tame, spiritless. We live in a world when you are docile. That means laid back or you are tame. You're spiritless. Jesus takes a spirited person through the Holy Ghost and makes them spiritless. In other words, you're not flipping out all the time. It ain't all about you. He tames us. Yeah. We becomes a trophy. Yeah. You know, you was the booger with the sugar, but now you Jesus is sugar. Amen. He got you. You know you got the goods. You know you got the stuff. But you ain't got to flaunt it. Amen. You know you all man. You know you all woman. Yeah. And so he has meeked you. Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth. You lack self-pride. And you know that don't sound good in this world because everything is about having pride. Have some pride in yourself. And so you become a bully. We wonder where that comes from. You bully people. You bully them on, 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 on the Internet or the, the uh, thing, you know, social media. You bully them. You bully people. You bully. You be four foot tall and bully with your mouth. Big mouth. Bullying people. But when you're meek, you learn how to submit without resistance. Amen. You do it in, in your home. You do it in your church. Amen. Submitting one another. You're a meek person. Amen. But some people, they take advantage of that. And then temperance. It's emotional restraint or self-control. It's fruit of the spirit. You be wigging out in the choir meeting. Wigging out in the Sunday service. Wigging, wigging out at the business meeting. Wigging out because you didn't get your way. Amen. Wigging out in the house, you know, having a conversation, throwing stuff. Amen. Wigging out going in the room, slamming the door. Amen. Wigging out staying gone from the house. Amen. Wigging out because you ain't getting no sex. Amen. Wigging out, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Folk Christy wigging out, cheating because, you know, ain't nobody told you your hair was pretty. Yeah. Man, you think I'm, y'all think I'm exaggerating. Yeah. Wigging out. You ain't, you going to find you a side piece. You got you a side man. Oh, don't look at me crazy. You supposed to be a Christian. You know, you hollering because you can't get your way. Your spouse may be going through a time, amen, when a physical time when they can't do certain things. You can't, and yeah, you 30 and you still virile and all that, but you got to have it every other day or every twice a day. So you, you, you can't be temperate. you got to find you a side piece. Because you sexual. You need to become temperate. You got to raise your voice, and you got to stand all over somebody intimidating with your, with your, with your little self or your big self. Got folks shuddering in the boots. That's just my way. You need some self-control. That ain't the fruit of the Spirit, sir or ma'am. I just get excited. Set to excite itself down. Amen. Whosoever is slow to anger and slow to wrath. Amen. We know you the daddy of the house, daddy. Amen. But the reason you got all them hell-raising sons is because you come off in there trying to be a gorilla man. Or it could be the mama. You know, somebody, you know, a, a happy wife, happy life. It ain't in the Bible. You need to find God, woman. Amen. Happy wife, happy life. Find Jesus and be happy. You got the Holy Ghost? Both to be happy. You got a husband that ain't treating you right? You better find Jesus. 
Don't you be stirring up no grits and, and lie. No hot rice and lie. Okay, let me leave that alone. Against such there is no law. I know what the Christian's doing. I'm going home. I'm done in a few minutes right here. If you get all that together, you can start discovering your spiritual gift. But the reason we can't discover our spiritual gift because we got all that mess going on. I'm just trying to tell you, you got a gift. We try to preach it to you, and everybody, they can't believe it. Because why would God give me a gift when I'm a hell raiser? I don't have temperance. I don't have patience. I'm not meek. You, our own lives testify against us. And so when the preacher gets up saying, you got to give, you be like, not me. <coughs> not much hell I raise. <coughs> Have you received the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit yet? If you're a Christian, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to come in and magnify himself in your life. Don't say, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, so that means I got it. You need magnification of it. You need demonstration and proof. And if you do have it, and I'm not just talking about speaking in tongues, that kind of thing. I'm talking about manifestation. Be refreshed. Say, refresh me, Holy Spirit. New wine. Holla, new wine. I'm going home here, man. We turning the corner. New wine. Amen. Start asking God for new wine. Say, I need some new wine. I need new wine. New wine. Say it. New wine. Y'all know you're scared to talk about wine, but talk about new wine is okay to talk about. Yeah. Say new wine. Yeah. Hey, Amen. No one pours new wine in the old wine skins, but new wine must be put in the new bottles. Mark 2 and 22. And what I just shared with you, the works of the flesh, makes us just like the old wine skin. We full of holes. That's why we come to church. We can, we, can, we can hold it a little bit, but by the time we get to the door, we done leaked it all out. When we need it, at home, on the job, with them kids, with that husband, with that wife, with them finances, man, get to count that money. You know, when the phone get to banging and the people calling us, somebody trying to holler. You know what I mean? Somebody meet us wrong in the road rage. We ain't got nothing. We ain't got no new wine. We back to our old self. Somebody come in town, say, let's go out and kick it the wrong kind of way before we know it. We look to the left, look to the right. We going to kick it. It don't mean that we didn't hear the truth, know the truth, but we, we are old wine skin still. Somebody say, new wine. New wine. Give me new wine. New wine. Niles, new as to time, fresh made wine. Give me some new wine, Lord, that's freshly made for me. Kanos, that's renewed wine skins that will hold liquid. Make me so that I can hold the new wine. Amen. See, he's not going to put the new wine, the new revelation, the new spirit into my old ways, my old habits, my old thinking. Amen. So give me new wine into my canos or my renewed wine skin, my new attitude about the Holy Spirit, about Jesus, about sin, about the words that come out of my mouth, about the people I hang around. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I ain't dead yet. I'm single. I ain't dead yet. I still like men. If I'm a woman, I still like women if I'm a man. But give me a new attitude about it. Come on, that's all I'm saying. I ain't trying to say, come on. <coughs> Don't let that be the priority in my life. You know what I'm saying? Well, I would let you take me out and kiss me on the first date. I'm going to change my attitude. Can I just be real about this? You can't get my digits just any kind of way. I ain't that desperate, you know, just because you holler at me, I'm going to throw my numbers at you. I can say no. So give me a new attitude. You ain't going to just get me in a dark place and start touching on me. Get your hands off me. Because my body is a temple, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 and 20. My body is the temple. And I carry the Holy Spirit inside of me. And, you know, I don't want a whole lot of leaks where he coming out. Hello? I mean, I, if it, I'm saved. I got him. I carry him. My body is a temple. No, you're not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm a temple. Come on. I forget sometimes, but I'm, I'm restoring my understanding that I'm a temple. And I'm not going to take Christ anymore into a compromise and say, oh, come on. I wouldn't take my, come here, son. Come here, my son. Come here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You, you, come here, my son. Come here. 
come here, come here, come here, come here. I wouldn't take my son, just take my hand. I wouldn't take my son into a compromising situation. I wouldn't take my son into a compromised situation, whether it was for his life, it was ba gangsters there, yeah. or it was a situation, dope was there. I mean, if I really loved him, a situation where I'm going to teach him something, yeah. they're going to, you know, I wouldn't want my son to yeah. see me yeah. do something mm -hmm. that would affect him yeah. as he grow. Yeah. That's all it is. It's yeah. like, okay, then I need to deal with my heart, not just go over there, they will get my son out of my life because the fact that, come here, come here, come here. The fact that when I became a Christian, God gave me his son yeah. uh -huh. to take care of for the rest of my life. So yeah. I got a choice that I got to make. Uh -huh. I got to choose between taking care of God's son, mm -hmm. keeping him the rest of my life, mm -hmm. or doing my own thing. Uh -huh. Now, if I forsake God's son, I'm going to be eternally separated from God and I'm going to hell. So, I mean, I got a choice. It's a difficult choice. Sometimes when you, my flesh is pulling me to, to sins, yeah. to bad stuff, or whatever. But whatever I do, I got to keep his son. Now, unfortunately, when we sin, sometimes we take God's son right there with us. Yeah. And, and God right. so loved the world, he gave his own son. And his son have to watch us lie, yeah. cheat, steal. But he loved us anyway because that's what the Holy Ghost is. Yeah. He's God son in the spirit that goes with us all the time. And we just need to realize that. But he's grieved. Put your head down. Look at the floor. He's grieved when we sin. He's grieved. He's grieved. He's grieved. 